Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember... I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this station's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I have my guest, Ibrahim, with me. Ibrahim, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, man. I know this was a little, took a little bit for us to actually finally connect, but we're finally here. And we were supposed to be reviewing the movie The Ritual, as I was just discussing with this gentleman a few minutes ago. But I got approved for overtime at, like today. So I had to take full advantage of that. And we will be reviewing that movie at a later date. But hey, man. Yeah, you got to make that money, right? Oh, hell yeah. You got to. <laughs> I mean, that's how life is, right? We got to. You gotta, yeah. you gotta, you gotta work to, to eat. <laughs> exactly. And pod until this is like my, which I'm speaking it to an existence. Until yeah. This is my nine to five. I gotta, my nine to five has to come before this, but one day this will be my main thing. I have a feeling maybe more than just potting, but it'll be like my main thing to where I'm just like, okay, yes, I can, I have to watch a movie for research for work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. It, it's hard, you know, like making that transition is like, that's sort of something I'm trying to do too. Like I started a podcast like right, uh, like in August, basically. Oh, nice. Um, and so I just, I do all kinds of films. Um, so I'll do a lot of new releases. Recently, me and my main co-host, we've been doing October horror film. Okay. Um, like older stuff, not not newer stuff. So we just like last week we reviewed Bram Stoker's Dracula. And before that, we talked about the film Mandy, which was like the, the crazy Nicolas Cage, really fun psychedelic movie. <laughs> if you um, my show, I'm sure you know how I feel about Nicolas Cage and it's not very good. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's interesting, right? Like there's like we were just talking about like, like imagine, imagine if someone like Denzel Washington did the stuff that Nicolas Cage does, like the level of films and stuff, right? I, I, you know? <laughs> I think Denzel Washington has way too much pride for him. Saying. Yeah. <laughs> There's, he's just way too prestigious to do it. Yes. But it, it's almost on the same level because, like, you know, Nicolas Cage, he's a big actor. He's won Oscars. Like, he's, he's from a really prestigious family, but he's just doing all these weird B movies. <laughs> weird. Yeah. And it is like, I, as far as horror goes, I love B horror movies, but I do not love Nicolas Cage at all. And real quick, I know you see the Z Network thing. I have a creators network. I created one with a friend of mine. We have a few other podcasters on there as well. And on that network, we started another show called Popcorn and Pints, which is all non horror show. It's pretty much how this show goes, but it's non horror shows and movie reviews. Or, yes, yeah, shows, reviews, movie reviews, and interviews. And the first movie reviews we're doing fuck you for this chris <laughs> he chose <laughs> he was like let's just do nicholas cage movies right he chose oh, yeah. Nicolas cage movies so we're doing um which i just watched one last night i gotta watch the other two tomorrow because i didn't have time today but we're, we watched so well, i watched mom and dad last night and then i have to watch 211 and 
looking glass tomorrow. Mm. And 211, okay. he's not watching because he uh, – I have a fire stick, people. I'm going to be honest. I have a fire stick. But anyways, he doesn't have one. And 211, you have to pay for it on Amazon. So mm. he's going to watch – he's been watching Nicolas Cage movies since Sunday. Why? I don't know. He's crazy. But, <laughs> but yeah. whatever movie – He's going to review those two movies with us, and then he's going to pick, like, a third random movie and just, like, talk about it during the episode, which will mm-hmm. be... I mean, it'll be fun and funny, not because it's Nicolas Cage, just because it's us. And so, yeah, like, that's going to be the... It's going to be the second episode. The first episode was an interview, but it's going to be the first official movie review episode tomorrow, which I'm not sure when I'll have it released by, but I'm just like, oh, my gosh, man. Like, I, I don't want to go out like this. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I, I don't even think I've heard of those films. But he's he's done so many crazy things, right? In the past, I want to say 15... I don't want to make this all about Nicolas Cage, but I believe it was yeah. since 2015. I th- I could be wrong. But in the past X amount of years, it might have been since 2015, he's done like 30-something movies. Yeah. 33 movies, I believe my friend said. And what he did was he wrote all the movies down on paper, ripped them up, threw them in a hat, and just picked out those three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Fine whatever <laughs> but yeah what i want to ask you though man is like who who or what got you into horror and if you do remember what's the very first horror movie that scared you when you were a child i would say what got me into horror was wanting to make films oh, uh i would say because horror is like such a powerful genre for filmmakers mm-hmm. and it's actually one of the genres where like it's really about the filmmaker and not other things like the actors you get or how big your budget is. Um, if you are creative enough to, or can create even just like an atmosphere, mm-hmm. you can really sell your, your product and then sell yourself as a filmmaker. So I'd say that really got me into it. I would say the thing that the movie that scared me, that's an interesting one. So, I would say that I was pretty resistant to being afraid of things for the most part. But the one thing that really actually scared me was I was, it was probably like in the mid nineties or something like 94, 95. And I was just like, you know, I, I had had a TV in my room for like a couple of years, maybe two, three years. And like at night I would just flip channels and I flipped onto the history channel and I watched this documentary about people getting abducted by aliens <laughs> And that scared the shit out of me, man. Like that really scared me. And then that sort of cascaded into other parts of my, my life. And so in certain films that played into that kind of a narrative, those would scare me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I remember like, I wouldn't say the films, the film itself scared me, but like there were parts of independence day that just scared the shit out of me. Like when they were um, doing like the autopsy on the alien, like that, that really got me scared when I was like a kid. Um, but the one, so I, I think the first thing that really kind of scared me in the same kind of context was when Mars Attacks came out. Like whenever I, I never watched that movie because like the aliens kind of legitimately scared me when I was a kid. Uh, so whenever like the alien, like the the commercial came on, I would change the channel and just like the weird ak, ak, alien, they, they freaked me out for a long time until like, like later I got the joke. And so it wasn't scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that, that w- those are like the two things that probably first really kind of scared me because of me watching that weird random history channel documentary about people getting abducted by aliens. Understandable. Understandable. For me, it was um, as far as what got me into it was. I, well, at the time I was the youngest for of my older one of my older brothers and then older cousins. And, you know, being the youngest, you want to follow all the older kids around. And that's what I would do. And one thing they would let me do with them is watch horror movies. And no matter whose house, it would rather be my mother's house or one of my aunt's houses, it would be, you can watch them with us. Do not go upstairs and wake up mom or aunt so-and-so because you're going to get us all spankings. Yeah. And I never did. But I was scared shitless <laughs> i can say that and the first movie that i remember it's not i might not be the first movie that scared me but the first movie that i recall that scared me was creep show 2 the hitchhiker why i mean i guess as a kid you know your imagination just runs freaking wild yeah you no know, it's make you they could tell you look this is not real this mm-hmm. is not real at all but as a kid 
you know, your imagination just goes where wherever it goes. And so, like, I remember having used the bathroom. I don't know if it was before or after we finished watching it. Or, I mean, during or, or you know, after it was over, that part was over. And I had to have one of them walk me to the bathroom, like, stand outside the bathroom and wait for me yeah. to go to the bathroom and all that stuff. And come back out. But I, w- I would always come back out. And I'm sure it's happened more than once. For I just don't remember the other movies I did. That's why it really stands out. And... I'm sure it's happened multiple times, but I always went back to sit down and finish whatever we were watching. And it just, it grew on me more and more as I got older. I mean, when I was a young kid, what, he's my best friend, but he's my, he's my brother. He lives out in Colorado now, but as kids, we would watch horror movies together. I remember when um, I got the Friday the 13th, the first box set on DVD, when it first came out on DVD. And I don't remember if we took the bus or my mother brought us to the mall to pick it up or what. But um, we went and got the box set, came back home, and we were too young. I, I think I, I, we might have been, I don't know how old we were, maybe, I want to say maybe 18, because we were old enough to buy R-rated movies if they did that ID check at the time. That part I don't remember. But too young to drink, like to buy alcohol. We might have even been younger than 18, because we wanted like candy and chips and energy drinks. I don't mm-hmm. remember, but anyway. Yeah, it might have been before they had the whole rating as far as like you can't buy R-rated movies and all that crap. But anyway, so we got we get the movie, we get back to my house, get all our snacks and stuff, and we just did a marathon. I believe I got it on a Friday. We did a marathon from that Friday to like that su- just watching them every single day, every night. Like pretty much, we'd wait till it's nighttime and watch them during the day. We out and about doing whatever, and then at night just watching them, watching them, watching them. And I'm just like, wow, man! Like it, it's just so crazy how horror draws so many different people from so many different backgrounds and we all love the same exact genre whether it be the slash the subgenre of slasher paranormal whatever the case may be we all love it we all gravitate towards it and you meet so many like i've met so many freaking people through it between going to horror conventions through facebook and just i mean having this podcast has opened it yeah. up a lot for me as far as meeting people which i think is awesome because i love meeting new horror fans and as far as just um watching other horror movies man because there's a i'm not gonna lie like growing up i would watch for the most part the same movies because it's what i was it's what i knew it's what i was introduced to by people that are older than me and it's what they knew at the time so i just watch all those movies that you can just go to the video store and get them easily and i'll say within the past 10 years more or less maybe a little bit more i've been branching out more just because of social media like seeing more i'm like oh shit i've never heard of this and then i'll say with definitely in the past three years my podcast i've been doing this podcast as far as dropping episodes three years in january so i'll say four years because i had a facebook page and all that like group i'll say within the past four or five years i've been reached branching out to watching more horror movies just because again with the social media and people are recommending these movies or you see people talking about these movies i'm like i gotta check these out i gotta check these out and I'm so happy about that. Like, that's one thing I love about this platform besides meeting awesome new people is finding new horror. Like, again, you well, for me personally, I know a lot of other people, they were able to see a lot more than just the mainstream. I mean, I see I, I see more than the mainstream, but you know what I mean? Like, I didn't see those others out there. And I do have another question for you. Halloween three. What are your thoughts? Well, I don't think I've seen that. Really? I've, I've seen I've seen Halloween. I've seen the I've seen the two um, Rob Zombie ones, okay. which were kind of forgettable for me. Uh, and then I've seen the like the new basically reboot sequel Halloween. Okay. Which I was, was that twenty eighteen? Yes, I, um, I recommend watching the franchise. It does jump around like most slasher franchises do. Yeah, part three though. When you get the chance, I'm not going to say if, I'm going to speak this into his existence. When you get the chance to watch this, watch it as a standalone film. Okay. If you do not watch it as a standalone film, and I'm not going to ruin it for you, you will be pissed off. Yeah. I watched it as a child. Do you know anything about it or no? I've I've heard, so like, I've heard a lot of people talk about what they do with the franchise with Michael Myers. And then there's like this, at some point they say, oh, he's a demon or something like that. I've heard of that kind of stuff, but I, I've I've never watched those films in depth. I basically kind of I, I don't try to be snobby, but like I, I sort of if there's not a lot of strong consensus about a film being good or or at least worth watching, I kind of 
avoid them. Oh, no, no. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why you're making that mistake, because there's a lot of those, especially with the horror genre, I'll say. There's a lot of those movies that you might pass up on because it might get bad reviews, say, from Rotten Tomatoes. They don't know shit. That's one. Yeah. And two, I'll say you'll find a lot of gems just from movies that are either not too popular or, or are overlooked or are get bad ratings just for whatever reason. I'll say just from like the you know the Rotten Tomatoes of the world and stuff like that, or the people who just watch, which there's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me wrong. You're still a horror fan either way. But the people that just watch, like, say, Halloween, Friday the 13th, and then whatever new comes out, that's all they're watching. There's some movies that are overlooked, and it's just like you have to just check these movies out. I say when you get a chance – you got to go down the Halloween franchise. My favorite franchise, if I had to choose, like my favorite slasher franchise is Night or is not Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm lying. Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> uh-huh. But and again, those really? are cheesy. Okay, I'm a cool. huge. I love Jason, and w- I think what it is is because back when I was a kid, USA Network Friday the Thirteenth that would be coming on all weekend, every week, or not every weekend, but every Friday the Thirteenth. That's what's coming on. It'll come on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just a marathon of it. Of course, they cut out all the blood, guts, and boobs, but you still get to see. You get that little taste of it. And uh, that's probably the movie I've seen the most out of any horror movie ever, just because of those years growing up watching it and then being an adult and still watching it. But yeah, man, you you can't pass up on those. I'm telling you, those sleep. Yeah, those I've, I've heard a lot of like interesting stuff about because like, yeah, the whole thing with Michael Myers is like, what is Michael Myers? Right. It's yeah. so interesting to think about because he's just. And a lot of them, it's just a guy who's just who's unstoppable. Right. Mm-hmm. And almost like the mystery of it makes it more scary. You know, it's like, well, I don't know what he is, but he never dies. And that's kind of scary. I agree. Um, and, you know, I, I'm i not sure. I haven't, again, I haven't seen the film, but I've heard people talk about it. And like, you know, them trying to explain the mythos in a way. And, you know, it's just that people have strong feelings one way or the other. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. But it's, I'll tell you like this. I'll say all the 80s slasher franchises that you can get your hands on are worth at least a four-time watch. I'll say at least four times. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people are like, four times? These movies? Yeah. No, you got to watch. Because it's one of those things to where, like, I mean, if you might get a different feeling from them because you haven't seen them as a kid for whatever ones you haven't seen. But at the same time, you get that 80s nostalgia, the cheesiness of it. You get this practical effects, which we all love in horror. And I, I want to ask you another thing. Do you have... um? Have you ever used Tubi? I've watched a couple of films. I, me and some friends, we did like sort of for a while, we did like a, a movie night where we would stream something together. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm a little bit familiar. I tend to, you know, use Netflix and Amazon and stuff like that. You're making um, a mistake, man, again. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I'm saying that because Tubi has a lot. There's like a lot of yeah. horror movies. Again, I told you I haven't seen a shit ton, but there's a lot of 80s horror movies that I've never seen before. And I go in there, I'm just like, it's either, oh, shit, this is fucking awesome, or, oh, shit, this sucks. I mean, there's yeah. in-betweens, of course. Like, I'll tell you one. There's one called the in- Intruder. It's called Intruder. It's on Tubi. Loved it. It's a horror slasher in like a mom and pop type of grocery store. It takes place in a grocery store, but it's really, I thought it was freaking awesome. Again, it's eighties. It's the cheesiness of the eighties. It's all that stuff. And I love it. I'm an eighties baby. So I love it. And then there's a movie that I fucking hated called blood Lake, which (laughs) I would say I'll never tell anybody not to watch a horror movie. I'll say those type of movies that I don't like, I'll say, watch at your own risk. That's yeah. my, my thing to you. Yeah. Because you might get a, you might watch it and like, I doubt it, but you might watch it and be like, oh, wow, this is a fucking great movie. <laughs> I highly doubt it, but you might watch it and like it. I'm sure there's a lot of movies that I've said I didn't like or hated that people do like, which, I mean, that's with everything. But this movie, I really don't see how people can like it. Even the people that made it, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, that happens. I mean, that, again, that's the other thing with the genre. You get like such large swings and, you know, the, I guess the the production value, right? <laughs> like some are like pretty strong, and then others are just like really cheesy. It looks like they made it in like a weekend, and the acting's bad. But you know, or there's crappy jump jump scares. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's again, there's some people like they love that stuff. Like what was one troll too? It's like 
a terrible movie, but people will love it because it's so bad. It's good, you know. That's, and I feel like horror is the only genre that can get away with something like that. Like, this movie is so bad, it's freaking good. Like I freaking love it. It's so cheesy, it's so bad, it's so corny, it's good. Another recommendation. I don't know if you've seen it or not. I love this movie. It's my favorite horror comedy. Why? I have no clue at all. Thanks, Killing. Love that movie. That's also on Tubi. I. It's about a killer turkey. That's okay. <laughs> so you know what you're gonna get from that. Like yeah, the, those type of movies where you know what you're gonna get, like a Thanks Killing or um. Any it reminds other- me of like Jack Frost or something like that. Yeah, it's like that, but better, in my opinion. I mean. And Jack Frost was a fun. Okay. Those are one of those fun films. You just kind of throw on. You know what I mean? Throw on. If you have a drink, if you drink or smoke, you throw. You do that. If you I, don't, just watch it. Yeah. I feel like I every time I walked like back in the day when I walked in the blockbuster, I saw that. <laughs> every single time I was there, Jack. Frost. <laughs> like those are like the one, like the Leprechaun and that kind of stuff. Like you're like you always walk past that and it's like, mm, should I watch this? I don't know. <laughs> but see, and I'm the type of person I'm like, oh shit, Leprechaun. I got to at least watch it once. I got to at least check it out. And I've done, I've watched that movie. I don't know how many times either. And again, man, it's just one of those things where it's like, like, we're, like you were just saying, it's so bad. It's good. Or, um, damn, what was I going to say? It's just, it's worth the watch. It's worth at least one shot. Cause at the very least you're just like, all right, I know never to watch that again. Or I know to watch that with the right. That's another, here's another thing I'll say too is, you have to watch some of those cheesy movies with the right people. Like you can't watch it with somebody yes. that's a, a quote unquote horror snob. And by that, I mean like someone who just watches yeah. all the, the, again, all the great movies, all the top movies, all the serious mm-hmm. stuff and won't watch any of the comedies and stuff because they're just going to be like, oh, this is, they're going to kind of ruin the mood for you as far as like, oh, this movie sucks. This is corny. This, yeah. cool. this is stupid. I'm just going to be on my phone and complaining through it all versus you got some friends that are just going to, they may not like it, but they'll have fun with it. They'll crack jokes on it. They'll laugh with it. And that is a great freaking... For those type of movies, that's the time where you don't mind if people are talking. As long as they're discussing like the movie, you don't mind. Versus, like I'll say, The Shining or something. or what I can't think of a movie, but The Shining or The Thing. You'll be pissed off if people are talking through the whole movie. But if it's something like that, you're just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ha-ha. That's funny. Yeah, for sure. Like Watch Jack Frost with your friends. Get drunk. Make fun of the movie. Do the whole MSTK3 thing and just have fun, right? Like, that's the whole point of those kind of movies. Exactly. It's not to, like, intellectualize them and analyze them because there's nothing there. It's just oh. a thing, you know? But if it's a thing and it's this communal thing and we're all enjoying it because we're, like, making fun of it or we're having, we're just living the experience of it, yeah, that has a lot of value, right? It does. It's it's those type of movies where you can just kind of turn your brain off. You don't really have to pay too much attention to. Like, if you leave the room to go out, grab a bag of chips, you're not going to be like, yo, pause it. Unless, unless two things, titties and a good kill. Other than that, you don't need to pause it. You can rewind it for those, too, actually. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, you really don't even, it's like, uh, I'm good, man. I, I don't need to see the guy walking down the street. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Now, which, what's your show called, your podcast? Yeah, my podcast is called Deep Focus Cinema. So if you looked up, like, Deep Focus Cinema podcast, you'd find, like, all of where my podcast is. Same thing on YouTube, so you can find. I do a lot of collaborations with people, right. and like I said, I have uh, my friend Lucian, me and him co-host a lot of stuff pretty regularly, about once a week. That's awesome, man. Yeah, definitely make sure you send me a link to that, because I'll yeah. post it once this goes out. I'll post it in the description down below. And I'll definitely check it out too, as well as I'm sure my listeners will. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Yeah, sounds good. And you just started in August. Yeah, I started in August. Um, I've been into film for a long time. Um, I felt like I couldn't. I've I've always sort of tried to do stuff related to film to try and talk about film, but uh, I think I needed to find people to like talk about it with. I'm not good at just like monologuing by myself. I'm just not that type of person. Uh, and so yeah, at some point, like I. I talked to my friend. I was like, Hey, let's do a podcast. He was like, sure, let's do it. And from there, I've just kind of been gotten the ball rolling. Uh, I, I also do um, a sci-fi related show about once a week as well with uh, this person, Feral Hazard. So me and her, we talk about different sci-fi films. Um, yeah. We uh, actually talked about a couple interesting horror films in there too. We did, we've done a bunch of David Cronenberg films mm-hmm. actually. So we talked about scanners. We talked about, um 
Ooh, what was the other one? Oh, what's the one with the the television that's like a person? Um, video drum. Yeah, we talked about video drum. We talked about that. And we also talked about another. Talk about a fun B movie. We talked about Deep Rising. I don't know if you've seen that movie. I don't think I did. Yeah, it's it's this '90s B movie action comedy horror film. Um, it's 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 very interesting. It's it's like it's sort of like um, it it would, be, it would be like if they took like the Mummy. So it's the, it's the guy who made the Mummy, right? So imagine yeah. like the Mummy, but like a like a a sci-fi horror film instead of like, uh, instead of like, you know, the, I don't know, the action adventure fantasy horror film. Um, and it's about this like giant sea monster that attacks this, uh, this, this, it attacks this like, uh, it's like a ship or something. And then it just starts eating people. And these mercenaries have to like, they're, they're, they're supposed to go on a different job, but then the, the, the sea monster attacks the, the ship and then they, end up having to fight the the sea monster um and it, it you know it's just it's basically like the suicide squad uh except like from the 90s it's got a great cast too um so yeah um famiki jansen is in it um the guy who plays benny in the mummies in it uh who else is in it uh cliff curtis is in it um west studio is in it it's a really good film i would definitely anyone who's like into like the fun kind of horror movies that are like very B movie, very cheesy, lots of one-liners, lots of like goofiness. I would say that's a good movie. So yeah, we reviewed that and yeah, we, um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got into all of this. And so me and all my collaborators talk about different, different films, review films. That's awesome though, man. You should de definitely send me both of those links. Like I said, I'll make sure that they're down below in the thing. And yeah, that's awesome though. And it, it's podcasting is so relaxing and so fun at the same like it's fun and relaxing as you're recording i won't even say the part sucks the editing part because i don't mind that it's just that it's time consuming as far as like what i for me i don't really cut out anything in my for my shows i don't cut out anything for the mm -hmm. most part here and there i have and i mean i have 130 something i think 139 out right now my brother, I think he reviewed, or not, sorry, not reviewed, sorry. He edited about a hundred of those for me because it was like strictly audio at first. Now it's wow. both. And like the longest, I think the longest part for me as far as like, because I don't do anything crazy, crazy edits yet. I want to do more visual edits once I learn more. But I'll say like the, the, um, the most, the longest time that as far as the editing process when you have to export it to you know to export it to the mp4 file export it to the mp mp3 file is like three minutes tops yeah the mp4 file depending on how long the episode is gonna go anywhere from like a half hour to like two hours yeah. and then to upload it to youtube I'm like come the fuck up. we have yeah. and then when it goes uploading to youtube i'm like come on man like let's speed this up and the only like the downside for it is like from the exp from the program I use, you can like export one episode. You know, edit one at a time. Obviously, and export one at a time. So, say I edit and export. Say I edit ten of them and have them all saved. I can't open the program ten times like you can for like a YouTube channel to upload like things ten things. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which can be a downfall. It's like, damn, man. I just want to. Yeah, that's a lot of time, right? <laughs> it, is, it is. Like this this week so far, I did. As far as editing wise, I did like eight episodes. Which I again, I just do like simple edits. Like I um. I have a, two watermarks now. I have a watermark for the Z network and a watermark for this, which is just Surf 30. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, so I'll keep those on there going through the whole episode. My intro is always the same. My outro is always, as far as like the intro music, my intro thing, my outro music is always the same. And then it's just the middle, of course. So I'd have to plug in the middle and then either make the watermarks longer or shorter, depending on the episode length. And of course, changing like the title of the episode, the guest name, the guest picture. Because what I do, what I do with my show is I'll do like a guest picture, which I'll I'll screen share it after when we're done with this in a little bit and show you. But it's it is fun though, man. At the end of the day, it is fun. It's cool because I've met so many cool ass podcasters on here, and I like I like listening to other people's shows. One because I love podcasts, and two, 
just to kind of hear how p- other people do their own shows. And I mean, like people like me and you, like not, yeah. not like a freaking, which I do listen to the bigger podcasts that are on huge platforms, the famous people, the rich people, but I'm mm-hmm. talking about, <laughs> me and you, that got to work on nine to five and we still listen yeah. to our shows and stuff. And it's cool because like a lot of us have, as far as like, I'll say, we'll stick with this horror. We have our movies in there. We have like a movie review, TV show review podcast slash interviews, but we all do it in different freaking ways, which is so awesome. Like, I like how I can, I know for a fact I can listen to your show. It'll be nothing like mine. I can listen to other podcasts. It'll be nothing, maybe similar to an extent, but it won't be this, like, you won't hear like a carbon copy of blah, blah, blah. Even if we review the same movie, you're going to get mm-hmm. different things. Yeah. Even if we different review experience. the same movies on, like, say if I was on your show and we reviewed a movie and we came out on my show and reviewed the same movie, it'd probably be a whole different conversation. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. I love that about <laughs> stuff. It just make, I'm just it makes you want to do it more. Like I said, one day this is gonna be my nine to five. I'm speaking that into existence right now and every day. And when that comes, it's gonna be like, okay, well, I gotta watch these movies because I have a show to do Monday through Friday. I'm doing shows and movies. And I never want this to get to a point to where which I don't think it will, where it feels like a job, even if it ever did become a nine to five, but if where it feels like a job and to where you don't want to do it. Like, I do it as a passion. I do it for... I just do it. It's fun, man. Like, who doesn't want to talk about horror... Movies... I'll just say movies in general. But who doesn't want to talk about horror? And who doesn't want to just kick back, relax, and just chill and meet new people talking about horror, getting people's different ideas? Like, it's cool recording with people from... Where are you from, by the way? Oh, I'm from California. Okay. Well, California. <laughs> I'm from New York. But... um, Yeah. New York State, though, not the city. <laughs> Up- <laughs> are you love upstate? Yes, because a lot of people when they hear New York, oh, how far are you oh. from the city? I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. like no. you from the city. I'm like, I know. I think you're from California. What part of California? From the Bay Area. Bay, like San Francisco. So like San Francisco, yeah. Okay, okay. Again, you know, Cal I'm not sure with Cali if it's the same with like being from New York as like the city. Cali, it's like the Bay. I'm guessing people say the Bay Area or LA. And pretty much, yeah. I'd I'd say there's 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 like there's basically there's a Sacramento area. Okay. There's a Bay Area, which is like San Jose, uh, Oakland, San Francisco. And then there's uh, LA is like <laughs> LA is a massive, massive sprawling place that consumes all these different cities. I mean, it's tons of cities, right? And you know, there could be cities 20 miles away that are like the drive is like three hours, <laughs> but they all get consumed into LA, right? Which is funny. <laughs> So, and then there's like San Diego. And so those are all, those are like where most people live. You know, then there's like Bakersfield and stuff like that. But most yeah. of the people you're probably going to interact with, they either live in LA, they live in the Bay Area, they live in Sacramento, or they live in San Diego, I'd say. Okay. Yep. Yep. How, now, how is it out there with the fires and stuff? Has that calmed down yet or? Uh, the fire. So, yeah, it's been better now. Uh, we had, so it was, what was it, September 9th? Yeah. <laughs> people called it 9 9 2020 was a day where we all, we woke up, we looked outside and it looked like Blade Runner. It was like the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. So that was like one of the worst days in the Bay Area, at least. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, you know, it goes off and on. Like there was a, there was an incident, I think it was maybe two years ago of a fire in, like up in wine country and like the stories from there were like crazy. Like people driving through, they, there was a story of like a, a group of people, they were trapped in a fire and then someone drove up with a car and they all jumped in the car and they drove through the fire and they made it down a hill um, and barely survived. It, it's, it's crazy stuff. Holy um, but you know, that, that, that's unfortunately the times we live in, in, <laughs> in 2020, it's like there, these fires are for real. And, it's just part of living in California. Um, yeah. 2020 has been a fucking wild year. 2020 could be a horror movie in itself, man. And yeah, I feel, it feels like it, right? Yes. And it feel, 2020 feels like longer. Than, it's not even been the full year yet. I know it's almost up. But it feels like it's been about four or six years. because been. <laughs> yeah, it has. Been, you know, you just think about like January. I was actually shooting a movie in January. Oh, and right. yeah, and I was shooting a movie. And we, we got like a weekend or two done. I was basically shooting like a weekend at a time. Mm-hmm. And then it was like February and then things were like kind of getting bad. And I was like, oh, well, I don't know what's going to happen. 
And then <laughs> by the end of February, it was like, nope, can't do anything. Can't shoot a movie. Can't go anywhere. We're all stuck inside. We're not doing anything. This is this is the real deal. Um, we all have to quarantine. And it's, you know, it's just like thinking about what I was doing in January in comparison to now, it's like a totally different universe, you know? It really is, yo. And you don't think about it until like, it's been months and months and months. Like for me, for example, I was just thinking about it the other day or talking about it the other day, as far as like going out to the, going out to dinner, going to the movies, like I wouldn't do, we wouldn't do it often. My wife and I, we wouldn't do it like all the time. Of course, we'd like to go out to eat here and there or go watch them. Mainly we'd go see horror movies. I, I I don't remember the last movie we went to go see sometime last year. I just don't remember what it was, whatever mm-hmm. horror movie came out last year, I believe. And like, you don't think like no obviously nobody thought like oh shit like 2020 <laughs> we're not gonna be doing any of this stuff anymore i know it, yeah and it makes you it makes you really miss those things and it makes you really like um i guess how important they were so i can't think of the word like how appreciate it thank you that's the word you appreciate it a lot more because again me going out to eat it's not that i don't like it it's just that I'll, eat, I'll put it this way. If we go out, like my wife and I will go out to eat here and there. I don't always finish my food. I'll take it home. Now, if we eat at home or if we like order in, if I'm sitting in front of a TV for some reason, I can just keep eating. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Just be relaxed. But at the same time, what I miss is like you go out to eat and, you know, you order your food, you eat your food or whatever, you drink your drinks, you leave your plates and stuff there. Like you don't have to pick that stuff up. You pay for it. Of course, you leave a tip. And it's like, you don't have to clean that up. You don't have to do the dishes. You don't have to do the cooking. You don't have to do any of that. And you don't really realize how amazing that is and how like much you should really appreciate it. And I only appreciate that, but of course, appreciate the people that work in those places until it's gone. Until it, or until it, like, I mean, I know stuff's opening back up slowly here and there with restaurants. You can wear a mat. You have to wear a mask to get to your table or whatever. I haven't been out to eat since this whole COVID thing started. But it's just like, it's just, I don't know, man. I, I hope it gets better. I want to say, I want to say, I don't want to say it goes back to normal. I want it to get better than what normal was because normal still wasn't all that great. It was good, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. but I want it to get better than normal. And I want our fucking horror movies back, man. There was so much shit that was supposed to come out this year. I know. Candyman. Candyman, yeah. Um, what was, there was one more, I'm thinking. I know there's more than one more, but there's one more that I have. Like, it's at the tip of my tongue. The Conjuring Part 3. Yeah. I was excited for all three of those. I think I was yeah. more excited for The Conjuring and Candyman than Halloween. I have high expectations for Candyman, which I hate having just for the simple fact of disappointment. It could be, <laughs> it could be a great movie, but you know how like, when you have high expectations for something and then you go there and the movie's good, but it's not to your expectations. So you're just going to be like, oh man. That's yeah, you kind of look down. Versus- I mean, Candyman is such a great property, right? Like when you think about yeah. The really iconic horror characters like Candyman is way up there. And yeah, yeah it just makes you feel like man, if they could just really get it right with a budget today with this, you know, like with in 2020, it could be a great film. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it, it, there, there's a bunch of films too. Like there was a bunch, there was a couple A24 horror films I, I wanted to see. Mm-hmm. So I think one was like St. Maud, which is played in some places, but it's not playing in America. And unfortunately, and um, there's this other one. It was like the Green Knight just looked really weird and interesting. I really wanted to see it. It was like this almost like an Arthurian horror film. <laughs> so, but like I, now we have no idea when they're going to come out, if they're going to come out anytime in the next year or two. And it's just like, that sucks. I, I, I'm just, I'm losing all the things I loved. I feel if, if this shit keeps going on, which I know you can't just snap your finger and have a virus go away. Especially, no, I'm not even going to bash Trump because he does that himself with opening his mouth. But no, if um if this is like this again next year to the point to where we're pretty much on lockdown or to where theaters can't really like open up like that, they need to just, they're probably going to start going to streaming platforms. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And yeah. I can honestly see the number one platform. I can see a lot of movies going to maybe Amazon Prime for the simple fact that you could either rent or buy. And I wouldn't be mad at that. I mean, I do miss the movie experience. I do, but I do also love watching the movies at home. Like it's, I'm weird. Like it's, it's one of those things. It's like I could sit down, you know, on the couch, have a nice drink or whatever the case may be, and just kind of chill. And 
if I start dozing off, I can hit pause and finish the movie when I wake up. If I have to use the bathroom, I can hit pause and hit play when I come back. You can't do that in the theater. Like, if you have to pee, you just got to go pee. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. fall asleep, which I've done plenty of times <laughs> in the theater, you just fall asleep. <laughs> I, the, the, here's the funny part, though, man. Like, I've fallen asleep for so many different movies. Never a horror movie. Never, ever a horror movie. But other movies, I'll just... My wife and I will just go to movies or my wife and... Maybe me, my wife, and a few others will go to movies, and I'll just after a while, I'm just out. <laughs> I'm yeah, out. yeah. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, man. And, and I do miss going to the theaters, though. Like, there's certain movies, <laughs> which the ones we just named: The Conjuring, The Halloween, and uh, the Candyman movie. I feel like those movies would be so awesome just to see in theaters, at least once. The new, I mean, I'm talking about the, the newer ones, not. Of course, the old ones. I would love to see the classics of those. Halloween, sorry, Halloween and Candyman. In the theaters. Like, my wife, like, what we've done so far, as far as the later franchise, we've seen both the Sinister movies in theaters. All yeah. of, um, I believe all of Insidious, except for The Last Key. Mm-hmm. And what's the other one? And The Conjuring movies. Like, we watched every single one, including the Annabelle movies and all the ones in between. Mm-hmm. The only one we didn't see is La La Rona. Which I still haven't seen that yet. Have you seen that one? No, I well, I've seen. I think I've kind of skimmed through it a little bit just to see how if I liked it. Um, I I, I was kind of like meh on that one, but uh, I I like the the Conjuring films. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like like the ones with the uh, the couple. I like those a lot. The offshoots, some are hit or miss for me. I could see that. I could see that. I, I like them all. I love, like, the original Conjuring, though, the first one was my favorite one out of the whole, like, franchise or series, you want to call it, whatever you want to call the whole thing. Yeah. Universe, I'll say, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the yeah word. I think that's what they call it. <laughs> that was definitely my favorite one, but I did enjoy every single one of them. It probably goes the first one, the second one, and then as far as the rest of the movies, I have to rewatch them again. But I, I, that, I, that's another thing I can say I like about what the horror is doing now, what the Conjuring did, how they connected all those movies. I think that's an awesome idea, and I hope horror uses that for more horror movies down the road. Like, especially with the, um, I guess you could say based on true events type of movies, or based, you know, like mm-hmm. kind of even if they're not, even if they're not based on true events. But I'm just saying, like, I like how they tie it, like with the Warren store. Is it the Warrens? Yeah, the Warrens. That's right. Yeah, but like how they tie all their stories together mm-hmm. with different, obviously different movie titles, but they tie them all together. Like you can, you can watch them in chronological order, and it doesn't start with a conjuring. I forgot where, how it goes, but I think that's awesome. Again, like shout out to Marvel for doing that with the Marvel universe. Yeah. Like, I think that's just awesome how they did that. Like these movies come out at certain times, and I feel like they almost draw you in with that big name, like the conjuring was like the big name one. It was the best one. For the Marvel Universe, I want to say it was Iron Man. I yeah, can't be wrong, but I think it was Iron Man. Might have been a couple of the Iron Man movies. So we're really because people know Iron Man. People and I mean Robert Downey Jr. People know Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark. And the by the way, one of the best casts ever was Tony Stark. Or sorry, was Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Because if you're a fan, which I know this is a horror podcast, people, but if you're a fan of the Marvel series, the cartoons even. He looks like the cartoon. <laughs> like he really favors the cartoon a lot. And he plays off that cocky, brash attitude to a T. He might be like that in real life. I have no idea. But he plays that cocky playboy attitude perfect. And they I think that was like the the best, hands down to me. If not the best, definitely one of the best casts they've ever done for any movie across the board. As far as the way he looks. And from I'll go from the cartoons. I never really read the comics, but from how he looks in the cartoons to how he looks in the movie and how his attitude was, for the most part, I thought that was freaking awesome. If if there's no Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, there's no MCU the way we know it today, which is crazy if you think about it, right? You're right. It's the biggest franchise ever, even bigger than like Star Wars, and it all started because they got this guy, and he's really the main character of all the big films, all the Avengers films. It's all mm-hmm. about him and his character changing or discovering something or sacrificing himself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which is, you know, it's crazy that, and he was on a downturn. He was just the alcoholic stuff and like the drugs, he was at a down point and then he got that movie and then he kind of recovered and became 
basically the big right. He's the biggest movie star on the planet, which is which I think wow. is amazing. Crazy. Yeah, it just shows you like if you really dedicate yourself, you can like come out of anything if you yeah. like really turn it around. You're right about that, and it all starts up here, though. It really all starts up here because it's like, and I mean, that could start up here, and it could be just as far as. The, just the thought process of I need to go get myself some help, whether that's a rehabilitation, therapy, whatever the case may be, whatever struggles people are going through. It's not always drugs and alcohol. I'm just saying whatever struggles you're going through, like I, I need to figure out a way to help myself or to help somebody come help me. So it all starts up here. And then the rest just comes. Like, I understand money does help a lot. If you're like, if you have a lot of money, I will say this, if you have a lot of money, it can help you in the fact of I can go get the best help in the world. But as it starts up here, it can also handicap you in this fact of drugs and alcohol. Hey, I have this money. I'm famous. I can get a lot of people will give this for free or I can go and buy the best drugs and alcohol, which can put you in that downward spiral more. Or it can also put you in the, the cockiness of I have this money. I can do what I want type of deal. But again, it all starts like right here and then kind of goes. <laughs> it just goes from that. What do you think about this movie right here? Just because I have the shirt Us? Jaws. Jaws is uh, probably, well, I'd say it's like, <clears throat> I think it's my second favorite work of all time. Oh, really? Uh, sure. My favorite my favorite is Psycho. Psycho for me is like my favorite. Like my favorites, I'd say it'd be like uh, Psycho, Jaws, and then probably, I would consider um, The Silence of the Lambs a horror film. Yeah. Um, so I would say that, and I would also say The Shining. Oh, yeah. And after that, Probably something like, I don't know, uh, maybe The Exorcist. Okay, okay. Uh, those are the films I like. I Yeah, we just did another review of um, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I really like that film a lot. That film probably makes my top 10 the more I watch it. Um, it's just like, so, like, I think his performance is so good. Gary Oldman as Dracula. I think, I think he's so good. And it's so interesting, all the things that he did, all the style that Coppola put into the film, like it's very stylistic and it gives you this kind of ethereal feeling in the film. And I just, I just love it. That was probably, that was probably one of the first horror films I ever saw. I was probably like eight or whatever watching that film, which is crazy. My dad would let me watch that movie. That movie is hardcore. Like there's some hardcore sex scenes. They like the freaking vampires, feed on the baby like there's multiple scenes with babies basically being eaten by vampires mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and there's some gory stuff there's like Dracula takes a beast form then he has sex with this woman on a balcony or something it's <laughs> the movie's absolutely wild and i'm like eight years old watching this thing like oh my god what <laughs> <laughs> but i think that's why like i like the traditional horror film i wasn't really scared by mm -hmm. because you know I've been inundated to that stuff and it doesn't totally affect me. Uh, but I definitely like enjoy the, like I, I would say another film that really scared me was Signs, the Shyamalan movie. Mm -hmm. That film like legitimately scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and like, like, um, cause it's, again, that's another thing. Like my fear was like aliens and alien invasions or alien abductions. And that's a movie basically about this really super scary alien. So what about, what about the movie Alien? That bother you too much, or? I actually didn't. Um, I, I I saw that a little bit later, and so my defenses were a little bit stronger. I didn't see that like when I was really really young. But I like the xenomorph is a thing that is so big in pop culture that I was familiar with the xenomorph mm -hmm. before ever like seeing th those movies. But yeah, when I saw it, I was I was definitely like kind of you know had my defenses up to not scare <laughs> myself. Yeah, because um, yeah, that could have like it could have if I watched as a kid. Uh, yeah, that probably would have really really messed me up. Um, I think I saw Alien Three when I was pretty young, and that one, that one's okay, but um, it didn't really scare me a lot. I think the thing for me is like, if the alien is really humanoid, mm -hmm. like really humanoid, that kind of scares me more. I don't know why. Um, it's just something about like like some a thing that is very similar to us, that's intelligent, that communicates like us that for whatever reason wants to like hunt and kill humans mm -hmm. that's the thing that kind of gets to me i don't know like that's specifically my my what my fear is basically 
<laughs> makes sense. I mean, I get it. It makes sense because it's like, again, you're saying it's like a humanoid form. It's humanized and it kind of way more intelligent, way more dangerous. And I'm just like, oh, fuck, what can I do? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any anything that could come to Earth is so far advanced than us that, you know, we don't stand a chance. Mm-hmm. And yeah, especially like in signs where it's like, there's all these creepy sounds and like they communicate through sounds and like they can camouflage themselves, all that stuff. Like that's scared shit. Cause I'm like, okay, so they could be anywhere and they're just like waiting to like, just jump me and kill me and eat me or something. And I'm like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to sleep tonight. You know? <laughs> Leave the lights on again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like, I, I saw that with my friends. Uh, and I legitimately didn't sleep for two days after that movie, after I saw it, when we saw it in theaters. Yeah. Two days straight, just like. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how old you are, but for me, do you, have you ever, and if you have, do you remember back in the day where it'd be like you and your group of friends, your mother would drop you off at the mall to go watch a movie. She thinks you're going, I'm just throwing this movie out here because I can't think of a kid's movie that came out around this time, but she thinks you're going to see like Bambi. You go buy the tickets for Bambi, but then you go sneak into like child's play. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I miss those days so much, man. Like I remember, yeah. My uh, my brother and I were just talking about this the other day. I don't remember what movie we were supposed to go see originally, but we went to go see The Bride of Chucky, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sneaking, snuck in there, yeah, because it was so. Because you just pay for your back in the day. You get your ticket, you get your popcorn, you get your candy, your snacks, whatever. You go through, you you know, you hand them your ticket, you go through the little thing. And you go down the hall and there wasn't cameras like there is now. There wasn't people walking up and down the hall. You know, it wasn't how it is now. So you go sit in the movie for two minutes, get up, figure out where the other movie is. You go in the other movie. Sometimes you go one at a time. You usually go both, though. You go sit in the other movie. You find a seat and you just watch the movie and you shut the fuck up. So you don't you don't want to cause a scene where somebody comes in there and get, you, get yourself kicked out because you're being stupid. And those were the days we did that. And then I remember going to like the drive ins with. It'd be older, like older cousins, family members, of course, and a bunch of us <laughs> go to the drive-in to be in like an SUV yeah. or a car right up the street from the drive-ins, right up the street. Everybody get out except for two people, pop in the trunk or hop in the, you know, the back of the SUV, cover up, be still, shut the fuck up, pay for two tickets. And you go in there and you got a car full of people, which is mainly two adults and a bunch of kids or teens or whatever, you know, watching some horror movies or watching movies in general. You get to watch these two movies back to back. And yes, as an adult, you know, it's wrong. Like now I look at it back like it's wrong. But as a kid, you're just like, this is fun. This is cool. Yeah, you're just time. doing it. Yeah. And I mean, sneaking into the theater, though, I don't feel bad for that. I don't feel bad for either one, but especially sneaking into the theater because I did act, I did at least pay. I just wasn't old enough to buy the movie that I really wanted to see. But I mean, shit. I definitely did the sneaking. Uh, me and me and my friends, like right after I got out of, like I was in junior college, and okay. me and him would just go every weekend. We would we would basically get there at twelve and leave at like ten, and we would see as many movies as we could. Uh, so we would just see everything, and that's where a lot of like like so in the like mid two thousands, I watched like a lot of those horror films. So. Mm -hmm. But like that again, it wasn't great stuff, but they were kind of fun. It was well, at that point, it was a lot of remakes and a lot of like the what is the Michael Bay company? Uh, it's like Platinum Dunes. They're making all these, yeah, they're making a lot of these like horror remakes. So it was like uh, they remade Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and there was also a remake of like The Hills Have Eyes. Uh, both good remakes, though. Both really good remakes. The one from Oath. I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from Oath Three, and I love. I actually love the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. Really, that, really good remakes. Yeah, I that the, that Hills Have Eyes remakes is like one of my favorite horror films for sure. Like on a pure entertainment level, it's way up there for me. I just there, there's something about the whole way that they do the story that's just so entertaining and like fun. It's just really I, fun. I just love that film. I actually, I see now. That's two movies I can no three movies I can say I like the remakes better than the originals. And people, if you're mad at this, I don't care. Hills Have Eyes, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Evil Dead. 
I know Evil Dead wasn't like a remake, remake. They call it like a reboot or whatever. Re whatever the hell it was. Yeah. I, <laughs> I like it better than the original. Not, and that's not to shit on the originals because I thought all three of the originals were amazing fucking movies. They're amazing films. If it wasn't for those amazing films, we wouldn't have had those three remakes and we wouldn't have had a lot of awesome films that we have now. But I just feel like the remakes were better. They're more entertaining. They're like, for all three of them, to me, they were like scarier in a sense, like darker, more gritty. And just rougher around the edges. And it, I just had a better time with them. I'm, I had a great time with the originals, don't get me wrong. But I just had a better time. I just realized this with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one because I did a podcast on that a couple weeks ago with my friend slash co-host. And we did the original. And I was like, I'm thinking and thinking. And I kept thinking about the remake. I was like, I like the remake better than this one. Like, I really do. Yeah, It's not like a landslide, though. It's, it's like by this much for each of them. But still, yeah, all those... All those movies have a very sort of grindhousey aesthetic quality to them. The originals, like they all, you can tell they're all made very shoestring, very kind of like like they like oh we're borrowing someone's house and here's a couple of random actors, uh, especially like Evil Dead. I love Evil Dead One. I really really like that movie, but you can tell that it was just a couple of guys in the middle of nowhere in a cabin, and he just knew a couple actors and they were just doing crazy stuff with the camera. Uh, and it just worked. <laughs> I was going to say, it w- not only did it work, and it worked well, but to where people will use those ideas even to this day with the way they do something with the cameras, the stories, all that. I mean, of course, like I said, they, we've said they made remakes of them. So they did something right with that. I I do really, really feel like they did something right with those movies. They did an amazing job, and they're just fun to watch. Fun, they're funny in their own yeah. ways. Yeah, the Evil Dead is very, it's very funny and very like kind of weird and campy and just getting into all this hijinks. Uh. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. And it's just, yeah, I'm going to have to do, um, I'm actually doing, I'm not sure when though. I got to talk to a few people, but we're doing, uh, we're going through the Halloween franchise. We did part one already. We got to do part two. Dad did part three with somebody already, so I'm not doing part three again. But, like, going through that whole franchise, we're going to review every single movie. And then at the end, like, after we're done reviewing every single movie, we're going to have an episode where we rank the movies from our least favorite to favorites, which will be fun. Doing the same thing with Friday the 13th. I'm actually in the middle of that. I forgot what part we're on now. And the same with, um, shit. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I already did part one. I'm going to do all the way up. And it's, I'm including the remakes if they have remakes, of reboots, late sequels, whatever the case may be. Like Halloween is going to be crazy because the way the timeline goes. <laughs> it and, is. It's going to go from <laughs> Halloween one. I was going to skip Halloween. Oh, I can't even tell you why. I was going to skip Halloween three for a reason anyway. And then you do from four on to H2 to 2018. Which. I mean, we would have been watching. Yeah, we would, it would have been out last Friday. Man. Crazy. Um, of Halloween. Um, what do you think of like the what was it the um, Nightmare on Elm Street remake? I was watching that actually recently. I need to rewatch that. I watched it once or twice. I need to rewatch. I need to revisit it though because my brother is a big Nightmare on Elm Street fan. He he thinks he thought it was really good. Like he really like he even mm-hmm. liked the look of Freddy. I I hated the look of Freddy. But he said it was more realistic. He said it was more like more, looked more like a burn victim than mm-hmm, the original mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't like the look of it. I didn't like the sound. But you know what it is because you're so used to the look of Robert England playing Freddy Krueger versus like a Michael Myers, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface, or a Jason. They all have masks. So even if you have a different actor, an actor for those three, yes, their movements are different. But it's like they have the same mask. The mask might be a little different, you know what I mean? But they have a mask on. But Freddy has that one iconic look, yeah. and it just bothered me. But I do have to go back and rewatch it. I, I, from what people have been telling me, it's a pretty decent one. Like, if you just ignore the fact that Robert's not in it and just kind of watch the movie for what it is, the guy did act his ass off playing, was it, I forgot his name, who played the actor. He did a really good yeah. job say that. Yeah, um, Jackie Earl Haley. There you go. I was gonna say Robert Nielsen or something. I have no <laughs> idea why. I have no idea who that is. But that—that's the mind that came. That's what came to mind. That's why I said I, I like. I'll let you take over if you know who did it. <laughs> I'm horrible. Yeah. Please. <laughs> 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 Shit up. 
Shout out to Robert yeah. Wilson, by the way. I don't know who you are, but shout out to you. You're, yeah, you're a real one. <laughs> you are. Great job at what you do. But um, yeah, it's something I have to revisit. But what did you think of it? There's a couple of scenes I think that are really good. I think you're right. If you if you are really attached to um, Robert England, and he's, he he does, does it so well. He's super iconic. Mm -hmm. And it's also his mannerisms and the way he carries himself. He's really charismatic and funny and, but also scary. That's just, you know, there's some things you can't duplicate or it's really hard to duplicate. I think that Jackie Earl Haley does a different take uh, in a way that I think is good. I think there, there's a lot of stuff about it that I like. There's a, there's a couple of really scenes that I like. I like Rooney Mara too. I think she's a good actress and she's really interesting in it. I think they do some things visually that are really cool. There's a, there's like the scene where <clears throat> they they talk about like basically people they go into micro sleep like you like fall asleep and get back up mm -hmm. and you see all these scenes where people like they're trying to stay up and then you see them falling asleep a little bit and then Freddie and then like you see the <clears throat> you see Freddie like taking over the dream and it's like reality dream reality dream which yeah. is really cool. Um, and there's, yeah, there's just like a couple of scenes where, um, where like they go into Freddie, like Freddie's bringing them into the dream because like Freddie, you know, he's trying to make everyone remember what happened and it's just, it's just really creepy. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's as good as like the, the original first mm -hmm. one, but I haven't seen, I've seen like, I think what was a new nightmare. I've seen that one. Uh, I've seen a couple of the other ones. I don't totally remember them, but I think it's better than some of the ones in the middle. But I, I think it's not as good as like New Nightmare or the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, but but worth a watch, I'd say. It's definitely oh, worth definitely. A watch. Definitely, I gotta, re <laughs> I gotta go back and rewatch that. And that's that's another franchise, man. I, I really highly recommend watching the Halloween franchise, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, all those type of franchises. Um, what about Scream? Have you have you watched those? So I've, I've watched, I, I think I've watched basically like the first and the second. <clears throat> I haven't really, I think the first one's really, really good. Like the, the scream is another one I would say is in my top 10 uh, horror films. Okay. Uh, yeah. When that movie came out, you know, I was probably like, um, like 10 ish. Um, so I, I definitely remember how big it was in the cultural zeitgeist. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like, you know, the opening scene is so like kind of strong. Like the fact that they killed Drew Barrymore like that at the beginning. Like, oh. I don't know if people can understand that. Like people, you know, if someone's a teenager watching it in 2020, I don't know if that would really process the way it did for us back then. You know, it wouldn't because they, a lot of them, not all, cause there is a lot that know about it, but I'll say a lot of them may not know who Drew Barrymore is. So it'd have to be like, if Drake was in the movie and got killed off first, I'll just use yeah. that. Everybody knows who he is. And that's the first name I can think of. I know that teenagers love him. So if Drake got killed in a horror movie first, they'd be like, oh, Drake died? I thought he was going to survive. It's one of those. Yeah. A big name actor, actress. Nine times out of ten in movies, they're surviving. <laughs> they're surviving, yeah. I mean, especially like how brutal it was. Yeah. How kind of shocking it was, how unexpected it was. It's just such a great, and it just set this the whole scene. And, and you know, it's again, it's like another one of those kind of meta horror films. Mm -hmm. right where it's like they're all aware of the tropes in the film and it's sort of making fun of itself but also kind of being self-referential mm -hmm. um and you know the ending is like you know the whole twist and everything like when you figure out the killer like that's super iconic so yeah i like the first one a lot i think that they kind of got into this weird thing where they're trying to one-up themselves in the sequels that i'm just like eh, you know um see with me I watched all of them that are out so far. I know they're making a fifth one. Mm -hmm. wasn't, I'm not a big fan of the franchise, honestly. I'm not going to say it was horrible because it wasn't horrible. It was fun, I'll say. And for the time that it came out, like you're saying, it was big, especially because the way horror was kind of like down in the dumps. That really did give horror that breath of fresh air, that CPR, whatever, that that life that it needs. Mm -hmm. But I just wasn't... I don't, it, it was fun. Like I said, it was fun. The ghost face mask was cool. Yeah. I just wasn't really ever like I'm the type of person I'll watch a friend like I'll, I'm, I know I'm going to probably eventually do that franchise a podcast on that mm -hmm. franchise mm -hmm. but like I'm the type of person with the franchise of a movie if I watch the first one I feel like I have to watch them all yeah and I don't hate it I just 
to me, they're like, okay, at best, maybe good. But again, that's what I love about horror is like, again, you said that the original is in your top 10. And, you know, for me, I'm, it's like the opposite for me. I don't necessarily know what would be in my top 10. I never really sat down and thought about that. And that's only because like, as far as horror movies go, I'm like a mood, like a mood watcher as far as it's like, okay, I want to watch something crazy. I want to watch Slasher. I want to watch this, that, third, whatever. Or I want to watch something that I've never seen before, whatever the case may be. And it's like, I don't know. Like I said, I told you Jason's my, Jason's my favorite slasher. But as far as like my favorite horror movie, I don't necessarily have one. As far as the one that came out in the later 2000s, like 2010 and up, I'll say it's probably Sinister and The yeah. Conjuring. Love those two movies. But like overall, I, I couldn't, I really couldn't tell you because again, I there's times I just want to watch... I guess you could kind of say that comfort movie. You know what I mean? Which I do, yeah. Weird. It sounds so weird. If you're not a horror fan, like, how the fuck is this comfort watching people get killed? <laughs> but it's just like that movie that you've just been watching since you were a kid. You just Again, it's one of those movies to where, like, you got a bunch of friends over, and you're, you know, you're having food, you're having drinks, you're just throwing movies on, just kind of shooting the shit, maybe even playing some board games. You, have mo- you can have it on, on as, like, background noise. But it's one of those movies that you actually enjoy. It's not like background noise, you're just having it on. Like, what the fuck is this? I gotta change it. It's like for me, it'd be like Friday the 13th, for example. Like, I could throw that on and play whatever or watch, Mm -hmm. you know, do whatever I'm doing. And I think that's why I don't really have a favorite, which sounds kind of weird. And it almost sounds like I'm dodging those questions, but I really don't have a favorite horror movie. It's kind of whatever I feel like watching or wherever the fuck's on. Like, again, there's times where my wife will be watching something. Hey, what are you watching? Yeah, I'll watch it. I'll sit down and watch it with you. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't know, man. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely feel that. Like, I, I in the last year, my go-to horror film has been Doctor Sleep. Uh, that was like my number one. I've watched that probably like five or six times. I gotta watch that. I heard uh, it. Yeah, I really, really liked it. Um, I'm kind of like the thing that I like in horror films is like films that are either supernatural or like fantastical. Like it's about people that you know, kind of like the Stephen King stuff, where like someone has like some kind of psychic power and yeah. that makes them interact with ghosts. Or they have to use their power to like kill people or something, or yeah. someone's using their power to kill people. I'm really into that kind of stuff, and I felt like that film just like the wor- the way it did the world building, the way it explained The Shining, the way it kind of connected the film and the book and everything all together. Uh, it really it really did it well for me, and I, I yeah I watched that film a lot and I really really liked it. Nice. Now, <laughs> you, real quick, did you read the books? I haven't read the books. I I've, I've definitely kind of read about like the books and the difference between the books and the films. And I've read a lot about Stephen King's um, I guess the Stephen King universe, like his different yeah, books yeah. and characters. No, yeah. I'm, I'm asking that because I did the, I read, well, I listened to the audio books for both of them. Fucking love them. Fucking love them. And I'm just like, I ha- I've seen the shining I need to watch Doctor Sleep though. Is it is it like another two to three hour long movie? It's a long. There, movie. There's a three hour director's cut. There is a two hour and maybe forty minute, maybe something. Two. I think it's two and a half hour theatrical cut. Um, yeah, I I would say if you want to, I think that I think the theatrical cut is fine. Um, if you want to watch a shorter version, the only things that are different is there's there's more character development and some interesting scenes that are cut out um see I'll the director's have, cut just for you telling me that i'd have to watch the director's cut yeah like just for that extra stuff and there, there is certain movies i can sit down and watch that are you know hour and a half two hour well <clears throat> the hour and a half is like the norm so i'll yeah. say like two plus hours but there's a certain type of movie i can sit down and watch it i mean sometimes you have to pause it in between because i might just fall asleep but no. <laughs> yeah I can just sit there and be glued to it. Like I said, the Marvel movies are long as shit. They seem long as shit, at least. Like I'll, the, I'll give you a great example. Like um, the last Marvel movie I remember watching that I went to go see in theater. Well, yeah, we went to go see it in theaters. Was uh, Black Panther, and that movie I watched it the whole fucking movie. I was just like, this is so awesome. And the you know what's crazy is my father went one of his, him and one of his friends went out and watched that movie, and he hasn't been to the movie theater in since I was a kid probably for years and he used to always fall asleep in the theater when the couple times he did bring us. Yeah. 
And he watched that. He told me, he said he watched that whole movie. He really enjoyed that movie. Like, he didn't fall asleep at all. He watched the whole, because I go to my dad's house all the time, and I'll be watching TV with him. He'll just be dozing off on the couch. (laughs) So for him to watch that, I'm just like, oh, wow, yeah, that's, I was like, I got to go see that. But yeah, like, those movies that are, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's another, it's another movie that's about, what, almost two hours long or two and a half hours or something, right? I forgot. It's, prob- it's probably over two hours for sure. Man, okay, so for those two I've seen, not back to back, but I've seen those and yeah, like those I enjoy. <laughs> and it's one of those, it's those type of movies that you're sitting there for two plus hours and you're just like, it's over already? Fuck, I want a little <laughs> yeah. bit more. So I'm, I'm hoping that's what I get from Dr. Sleep to where when I do watch it, I'm like, okay, it's been three hours. Holy shit, it's, it's over. I want more. I want more. Yeah, it's, it's a good film. Are you familiar with Mike Flanagan's work, like some of the other shows and films he's made? Honestly, I'm not. And I'm horrible with names, but... Oh, okay, yeah. Email me anything about that, man. That's one thing I will say. And I'm about to wrap up. I do want to thank you for coming on. I had an awesome time. We definitely got to do this again. Yeah, for sure. And again, if you have any, if you have anything you want to plug, like your two, YouTube, your two um, podcasts, feel free to plug them right now. And then whenever you get a chance to shoot me an email with both the links. And as soon as this episode drops, I will have the links in there and I'll send it to you. So yeah. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, again, my, my YouTube channel and podcast is the same name. So just look up deep focus cinema. And if you just Google deep focus cinema podcast, you'll find my podcast. Um, so yeah, coming up <coughs> horror wise, yeah. I'm going to be doing a review with my friend Lucian of possessor uncut. So we'll be doing that probably coming out this weekend. Nice. And then uh, next week, we're probably going to talk about, I think actually it'll be like, we're going to do one this weekend and then we'll do like another one on like, uh, we're going to do like three more horror films. And so then the next one after that is going to be um, Pan's Labyrinth. So yeah, that's some stuff to look forward to um, for me. So yeah. And again, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. It was a great conversation. Oh, of course, man. Anytime. <laughs> I promise you next time. Well, I won't promise, but we will review the virtual and probably yeah. other down the road. But what's your what's your other show that you were connected with called as well? Shout that one out again, man. Yeah, well, it's all on the same network, I guess you could call it. So if you look on uh, Deep Focus Cinema, you can find the stuff that I do, the sci-fi stuff that I do with Pharaoh Hazard. Um, I've done some other just random stuff there. So if you're into horror, if you're into sci-fi, if right. you just want to see people talk about the, I've even reviewed films that played at festivals. I recently reviewed this film, Wolf Walkers, which is like a really big animated film that's going to come out later on on uh, Apple TV. A lot of people have been listening to that. Um, I've reviewed a lot of the big Netflix releases. So like um, we talked, me and Lucian talked about our theories about I'm, I'm thinking of ending things. Mm-hmm. So if you're into that kind of stuff, we talk about those things too. So anything film related, we tend to to have big in-depth discussion about it. Awesome. Awesome. People, you heard it. Go check him out. His stuff sounds fucking dope. You heard the conversation we had. Awesome guest. Awesome time. We are going to review the ritual as well as other movies later on down the road. So he will be a reoccurring guest. And again, man, just send me that stuff when you get a chance to. So go check him out. Go check out all of his stuff. Click the links below. Check out the Z Network. Check out Horror Research 30. And thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmare.